Rock family says never before seen video brings up new questions in the death of their father, killed four and a half years ago in a police shooting. 67 year old Eugene Ellison was shot and killed in his apartment in December 2010. We have never heard from the officers involved in this, but only on KRK reporter Marcy Manley has obtained never before seen video depositions they gave in a lawsuit. It's testimony Ellison's son say proves their father didn't have to die. Each time I come home, my stomach hurts. The last four and a half years have been a long road for Spencer Ellison. It's been a, a holy nightmare. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. You know, it's been almost five years and we're still trying to seek justice in this case. That nightmare began December 9th, 2010, when two off-duty police officers working security at Big Country Chateau shot and killed his father. The door was open. He died because his door was open. Officer Donna Lesher and Detective Tabitha McCrillis noticed 67-year-old Eugene Ellison's open door. They claim they told him they were police, but can't be sure he heard. Because you might not know the resident's identity, you have the right to walk in his home. If the door is standing wide open and it appears that there may be something going on inside that resident, then yes. The Navy vet who had lived in the complex for 13 years responded he was okay, he was alone, and told them to leave. And you said that the reason that you <clears throat> walked in was because he was mouthy with you, right? That was part of it. McCrillis and Lesher both stepped inside and say Ellison charged them. But McCrillis... I pushed him away because I didn't want him to grab me. ...made the first physical contact. But you didn't know that he was going to grab you when you pushed him. I thought that he was. He was coming towards me in a quick pace. He was also and coming no, near the door, though, correct? What happened next isn't under dispute. A struggle ensued. Lesher and McCrillis suffered bruises, abrasions, and a chokehold at Ellison's hands. Throughout the struggle, Mr. Ellison was repeatedly yelling at both of you to get out of his apartment, wasn't he? Yes. You think that if you had left his apartment that Mr. Ellison would have chased you down the walkway? Yes. Why do you believe that? Because he never stopped coming. I mean, it was... I mean, he just never stopped. Ellison was elbowed in the groin, hit with a baton, and bitten on the arm. At some point, both officers said they used pepper spray, but the coroner said no evidence of pepper spray was found on Ellison. He suffered the whole time. The officers' radios were off during the struggle, but eventually, McCrillis managed to call for backup. Two officers arrived moments later to find Lesher inside the doorway, McCrillis outside, and Ellison inside his apartment. I'm going to tell you one time, get on the ground. He was in an aggressive stance. You can tell, again, you could tell he was fighting. Ellison refused, and one of the officers pulled Lesher out of the apartment. All four of you could have walked away. Is that a fair statement? Yes. At this point, no fighting was occurring, but Ellison walked over. Get the cane now. Only two of them ever claimed to see it in his hands, and their accounts of what he did with it conflict. So he wasn't swinging it at all. Is that true? Not that I know of. I don't know. Audio recordings never capture Lesher alerting Ellison she was armed or planning to shoot. And Lesher, standing outside the apartment, fires twice inside while instructing him to drop the cane. She had every opportunity to reevaluate the situation before engaging in to take a deadly force. Ellison's sons believe officers had options aside from killing him. In the second before you shot Mr. Ellison, you could have you could have walked away, correct? Yes. Couldn't you have left in the middle of the fight? We could have. Why didn't you? Because that's not I'm not gonna just give up. Sitting here today thinking about those actions, is that different than making the decisions right then? Yes. At least one of the backup officers who wasn't there for the struggle are. claimed he didn't right feel here. threatened by Ellison while on scene. At that point, no, I did not fear him. You did not have a fear of deadly force from Mr. Ellison when you got there, did you? Yeah. No, I did not. This is different. Every time I come out here, for me, I, I really wanted my son to meet him. He didn't have to be shot and killed that night. He didn't deserve to die. And I'm going to stand behind him. As long as I'm living, I'm going to fight this. Spencer Ellison knows no matter what happens with the case. We're divorced by our father. I carry his last name. His journey will eventually end here. Him sharing the news with a tombstone that carries his name as well. The Little Rock City attorney agreed to an interview late this afternoon, past the point where we could include it, but he responded by saying in part.
We can't judge these situations with the comfort of 2020 hindsight. You know, we're in a, in a room after having had a discussion this morning. This was a rapidly evolving and very tense situation, and the officers had to react as they dealt with it. And, and that's the problem that officers face. Tom Carpenter's full interview, along with extended cuts from the officers' depositions, and the entire interview with Spencer Ellison can all be found on our website, ArkansasMatters.com. All right, Marcy, thanks very much.